So your alarm goes off at 7 a.m. and you can feel the flutter in your chest that wakes you up, forcing you out of bed to seconds flat. Your outfit is planned, a new button-up shirt your mom had bought for this very event. You wear your hair down, something reserved for special occasions. You finish your makeup and you look good, prepared for the day. Walking into the building, taking the elevator up seven flights. You're introduced to the members of the Boston Women's Fund, a small group of only four women, but they all greet you warmly. You spend the day getting to know them, hearing their stories, and begin to share some of your own. You're excited about what the next couple of months will bring. Then there's the part of the story you don't include, the part where you type the wrong address into your GPS, ending up at the same address but in a different city, Boston, <laughs> not Cambridge. You try opening the door, but it doesn't open because, of course, you're in the wrong place, but you don't know that. Time's ticking down, closer and closer to 9 a.m., time you're supposed to be in the office. You call your mentor, telling them you think you're in the right place, but you can't get in. As she repeats the address to you, and you compare it on your phone, you finally realize your mistake. You type the address in again, this time including Cambridge. The office is 30 minutes away. You feel the tears well up in your eyes as you force yourself to tell your mentor that you had the wrong address. She reassures you it's fine, but that doesn't stop your brain from wanting to rip the skin off your body. <laughs> you look for the bus that will take you where you need to go and get on, swallowing the tears that were attempting to fall. Finally, you're on and the bus starts moving. You are truly on your way in the wrong direction. <laughs> you have never taken the bus before and forgot the fact that you need to get on the right side of the road that will take you on the right route. You can see your little circle self moving farther and farther away from your destination on your GPS and the blue line getting longer and longer. Next stop, you're off, covered in sweat, looking for the next place you can get on to go the right way. You get on the bus again, and you make the same stupid mistake. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. The tears come back this time, breaking down over your cheeks. You get off the bus again, slowly losing yourself to your emotions. One more try. You get on a new bus, and of course, your card doesn't work. The bus driver simply waves you to go sit down, and your silent bank will that they let you stay. Finally, you see your bubble begin to follow the blue path, indicating that you are moving in the right direction. You try to avoid the fact that it's now 9.30 a.m. and you still have a 30-minute ride. You try to collect yourself, wiping away your tears, along with a good portion of your makeup. 30 minutes pass and you enter Cambridge, thinking to yourself, wow, that does look like the right place. <laughs> your mentor meets you at the front door and leads you up. Again, things are great. Besides the fact that your head is pounding and your stomach is churning, you haven't fully recovered from the embarrassment, and you can still feel a lump, feel a lump in the back of your throat. You're forced to remove yourself from the group, heading to the bathroom, where you were going to take the breakfast you prepared for yourself earlier that morning. Looking in the mirror, you try so hard not to cry, but you feel like everything is coming down on you. Your headache is making your eyes go blurry, and your stomach is relentless in its fight to purge everything inside of you. Leaving the bathroom, you make another two hours before you cannot physically take it anymore. You have to tell your mentor you're not feeling good, and she encourages you to go home and feel better. The 30 minute ride home goes smoother than the ride there, besides the fact that you're now really crying, and wondering how you could ever go back in and face those women again, after being a total mess on your first day. The ending, I did go back. It took everything inside me to force myself there ignoring the fear and humiliation from the day before. Before you know it, weeks pass, and no one remembers your first day. Instead, you're all focused on contributing to the success of the organization. They graciously commend me for the work I've done in the past couple of months, and encourage me to keep in touch. I promise I will, because the connections I've made here, these are the people that were able to support me, even through my mistakes. I was able to grow as a person, pushing past my fears, creating connections and joining a family I never expected I could. Through the support I was given this semester, I was able to produce some of my best work and gain the confidence to ride out the storm and find success. <laughs>